The history of the Kalanga people is interesting and uh, quite varied, especially when you look at the oral traditions of the Kalanga people, those people who have spoken Kalanga throughout the years. There's been many different tribes, different people groups which have spoken Kalanga. One of the most interesting oral traditions are from among the Venda. There's a group that is called the Balemba. Their traditions say that 2,500 years ago, a group of Jewish traders came down through Yemen and through uh, Ethiopia and Tanzania and Mozambique, part of the great building of Great Zimbabwe, and that priestly group of people spoke Lukalanga. Traders who were Semitic brought about something of a monotheic, the monotheic concept of a god. It came and superimposed itself on earlier religious practices, which were, when you look at the elements, were animists. People had priests who stood on the hills and read from a book of skin, and later that book of skin was lost. And uh, then a voice came from the mountains and talked to the people, the people would gather. And go and ask for whatever they asked for. And, and, and dance the dances that uh, will either propitiate their God or make God uh, bring them something. People of the past were communicating with Mwali in the same fashion as the Old Testament people were communicating with God, with Yahweh. So to me, or the, the way the Kalanga people understand it, Mwali is God Almighty. We can't say for sure uh, really what happened at that particular time and what's happened since, but one can only wonder there were a lot of Jewish traditions and yet remain today. In the Mwari, there was a Nsi, meaning that you mustn't wake on this day because of the day of Mwari. If you want to put it in modern speak, it is the Sabbath. It's something that has happened for many years ago. Yeah, it's not something that just came about, it's something that happened well before the 1800s, I suppose. When the missionaries came, uh, uh, from Western missionaries in the 1800s, they kind of poo-pooed the whole notion. They said that could not be that way. But the voice on the mountains actually predicted that there would be people with eyes like cats, with long hair, with long noses that would come and bring a different message. These people, but they have money. But he said, he said, he said, man, he said, button. He said, he got button in the hand, and the other hand is holding the book. But I will no more talking to you. You work with those people. Myself now, I'm going to the ground now. I will be in the roots of the grass. I will no more talking to you. I want to ask the question, was this God, the Jewish God, Yahweh, who was coming and somehow was maintained a presence in the Kalanga? We don't know. Uh, there's too many questions to be answered, but it's very interesting to say that uh, the Kalanga people had God's word in the Torah, and it was taken from them, and they maintained many of these traditions. And today, we can say that God's word has returned to the Kalanga people, uh, that they do have God's word now in their language as the Old Testament and New Testament have been translated. For me, it is a good sign. As a Bible translator, it is a good sign that all Bibles were sold out. It is the first true Bible endeavor in, in, in Botswana. Because the Sitswana one, it was done somewhere in South Africa, but the Bible Society of Botswana is its first enterprise with the Lutheran Bible translators and then the, the other partners in this. In Lutheran Bible translators, we always work with uh, local partnerships, uh, especially local mother tongue translators, by providing the training that they learn Greek, Hebrew, all the translation skills that they need, and we provide the consultant help that uh, everything happens. We can never learn a language well enough to do the translation ourselves. It always has to be the mother tongue translators which provide the quality and the control. I feel this is the real Bible. Eh? I'm feeling proud to have been part of the team and I thank God. It's a work that honors God than just even uh, uh, the translators who were there. We're only objects, tools that God uses. We have 
chiefs, uh, they were part of this Bible. And they will tell you that when will this Bible be out so that this community and this tribe will know God. Because we, are, we want to tell them that God doesn't want what they are doing. Today is a great day ah. and uh, it means everything good to me. Yes. It means that the long journey mm. and the work of translating the Bible has finally come to an end. Mm. We differed, we fought, we went up, we came down, but all this has finally come to an end. The history of the Bible translation work in Botswana would be very much incomplete uh, without the mention and the, 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 the calling on uh, of the name the Lutheran Bible Translators. The translation process is a lot more complicated than some might think. In the case of the Kalanga, there was no writing system that had been accepted, and the first step was to make a writing system so that when God's Word was written down, everybody would agree. Once the development part is done, when the Bible translation is, is ready to go, uh, translation training for the translation advisors, the exegete has to come in. People have to be trained in Greek and Hebrew so that God's Word is translated excellently. The process can take many years sometimes, to involve the language community, to involve all the churches. For the Kalanga people, we want all churches to use God's Word. We translate that God's Word can be excellently translated for all people who read it. This Bible brought hope in my life. It brought light in my life. I haven't read this, but I'm going to read it. And my wife loves to read Kalanga also. Mm. And we know Mama Sujan. Yes. Mm. So we are going to be reading. That's why I bought two Bibles. Mm. One is for me, one is for her. Uh, okay. Yeah. It's a realization of a dream. Personally, I had always wanted to see the Bible in Kalanga for the purpose that people should hear the Word of God in their own language. And I've seen the difference that that makes mm. in my work in the congregation out mm. in the village. If you can just talk to the elderly people, to the children in their language, it makes all the difference. You know, when you talk in your own, own language, mm. it's so meaningful. There is a really joy in me. This is history for, for the Kalanga tribe, what's happened today. And we appreciate you guys for the love that we had for us as Kalanga people. We are so proud of you. Thank you very much for the good work you are doing for all these tribes who are willing to have the Bibles in their languages. If it were not for you, uh, we could be reading these Bibles which we do not understand. <laughs>